A family celebration turns into a desperate search. Next on Come On News 4, a live report as the agonizing search continues for this little girl who disappeared from the banks of the Skykomish River. Police arrest a North End arson suspect. See what we found out about his previous criminal record. Beautiful day around here, lots of sunshine. Will it last for the week? I'll have that. And also the latest on the evacuations as Tropical Storm Aaron looms on the horizon near Florida. Then in our second half hour, it's a small world when it comes to Disney and ABC. You'll see what the major merger means for Como TV viewers. It's all next on Como News 4. Ain't no little rainstorm gonna stop me from getting a black Angus. This month, you and a friend can save 10 bucks. You get two half-pound prime rib dinners. Share their wagon wheel appetizer sampler. Then split a big old mountain chocolate fudge cake. The whole shooting match for two, just 26 smackers. That's 10 bucks off the regular price. And if you got a Visa card, bring it. Maybe it was the backyard campouts or cooling off with friends in the summer. Somewhere along the line, you realized why it's so great to live in the Northwest. That's why it's great to have a radio station that understands what matters to folks around here. Como AM 1000 has been part of the Northwest for over 67 years. We grew up here and we're still growing. For the best local and national news, for Husky sports, for a unique perspective. Como AM 1000, we know the Northwest. One attorney with the experience to handle a high-profile murder case. Not a word, Richard. A lawyer always wants you to think it's us against you. It doesn't have to be that way. One man the accused can turn to. Get me out. One defense lawyer who'll put his career on the line for you. You bet your guy didn't do it, or you're going to get him off. Never bet against me on that. Daniel Benzali stars in Stephen Bochco's explosive new drama, Murder One, this fall on ABC. You're watching Como TV 4 in Seattle. Now, Como News 4. The river she liked so much might have claimed a little girl's life. Rescuers found no sign of Kaylee Alberts today. Her family fears she wandered away from their barbecue Saturday night and fell into one of the most dangerous bends of the Skykomish River. Good evening. It's been a discouraging day for the family of the 23-month-old girl. But divers are not giving up yet. They're still searching the water right now. Como's Brian Johnson has been following the story since the search began yesterday. He joins us now live. And Brian... What are deputies saying tonight? They are saying this search is going agonizingly slowly. You see, this is a treacherous river. They may have six divers out here, but the waters are so royal that only two can go in at any one time. Kaylee Alberts would have been two this coming Friday. Her wagon and her footprints were found alongside the Skykomish River. This river runs fast and deep. Today, a helicopter looked down at the shallows and found no trace of Kaylee. As her family watched from the banks, diving crews checked out the deeper, more dangerous areas. And Major Terry Lucan says there are dangerous areas. Uh, we have big divers with weight belts on, and they were being tossed around in that current. We even had an anchor we tried to anchor our boats with. It's over 40 pounds, and it just floated right to the surface in those currents. The current is so strong, the boats the divers were on tied off to cars and trees. At one point, a diver splashed over. He was in the water only two minutes. Despite 40-pound weights, he could not get down deep enough and was smashed into rocks. He was not seriously injured. Kaylee's relatives spent most of the day at Riverside, hoping the two-year-old's body would be found. You know, I'd like to see my sister and my brother-in-law be able to have something that's tangible in front of them and, you know, so they can say their final goodbyes. Uh, you know, you know, what do you do? Do you have a memorial service here if, if, if you never find the body? And, uh... Just about an hour ago, the sheriff's major said, we've searched every place we thought the body would be. Now there's a possibility we, we missed her in the search. She's a very small person. She could be hidden under a rock, uh, could be uh, hidden in a crevice we couldn't see, but we just about searched the area that we felt confident she would be in either by air or by sea, by water or by dive. Major Lucan tells me right now they've moved the search effort farther down the river. They don't think Kaylee could have gone that far, but they don't want to leave any area unchecked. 
Margot, Dan. Well, Brian, given the fact that they've done that extensive search to this point, w will they search more tomorrow? What do they do next? That's an open question at this hour, Dan. They expect to stop the diving at about 6 o'clock tonight. Then there'll be a brief meeting to decide whether or not they'll go over the areas they've already searched. If not, they'll have to decide what to do. Brian Johnson, thank you. There's still no sign of a missing three-year-old Tacoma girl, Lenoria Jones, vanished about 10 days ago. Lenoria's aunt reported her missing, but Berlene Williams has changed her story, story surrounding the disappearance five times. That's even though she was ordered to court twice last week to tell what she knows. Police detectives are investigating several possible reasons for Lenoria's disappearance, including a custody dispute abduction, foul play, or an accidental killing. A man who spent his career protecting children says he's being made a scapegoat by child welfare services over the death of a little girl. Three-year-old Loria Grace died from suffocation. Prosecutors believe the girl's mother stuffed a sock in her mouth. The man who managed the office which handled Loria's case says he's being made a sacrificial lamb. Bob Dupay says he never received warnings about the girl. But the Department of Social and Health Services claims he minimized repeated warnings his office received about the mother. DSHS has reassigned Dupay while it investigates what happened. Dupay finds out this week if he'll lose his job. Police say it appears an argument between a husband and wife led to a deadly shooting. It happened in Squim. 37-year-old Ray Lee was found dead in his driveway. He had been shot once in the chest. Lee's 27-year-old wife has been booked into the Clallam County Jail for investigation of homicide. Two arson investigations are keeping police busy right now. The first case is in Shoreline, where a suspect in several arsons is under arrest. Five fires were set during a two-week period at the Echo Lake Apartments. That's where Como Sharon Dennis is standing by live with the latest. Sharon? Well, King County police and fire investigators didn't have to travel far to find their suspect. He was living here at this apartment complex. The arsons began in mid-July and set using some sort of paper product. Investigators say two were set on a deck, another in a hallway, and throughout the apartment building. A witness and fingerprint left at the fourth fire led authorities to the man. He is expected to be formally charged with arson tomorrow. A Shoreline Fire Department spokesperson says the fire caused minor damage, but he's relieved the man is now under arrest. Uh, that building is an old building. Uh, it's uh, in, in fairly poor condition. We were concerned that if the arsons continued there that uh, it caused a grave danger for uh, loss of life. So we were, we were just relieved that we found the guy. And that man is also under arrest for another arson that happened in 1994 at a house here in Shoreline. We checked his prior criminal record and this is what we found. Since 1981 the man has been in and out of jail twice for burglary in 1981 and 82. In 1983, he pleaded guilty to arson and in 1994 for a controlled substance. He is again expected to be formally charged with arson tomorrow. Dan and Margo. Sharon, I've heard this arrest is something of a collaborative effort. That's right. And they're very proud of that. Uh, King County Police, uh, Fire Marshal's Office, Shoreline Fire Department, even the Department of Corrections all involved in this case. The man was arrested without a fight on Friday. Sharon, thank you. The second arson case is in Seattle's Central District, where a church was destroyed Friday night. Cummel's Rick Price reports fire investigators say they have a lot of clues, but so far, no suspect. In today's bright sunlight, there was no escaping the extent of this fire's destruction or a sense of what was lost at the Pentecostal Community Church. Just ask the Reverend Curtis Dokes, now pastor of his own Pentecostal congregation. He says this is where he received his call to the ministry at the age of 19. His hope for the arsonist, not revenge, but redemption. Hopefully the person see uh, how this has touched or hurt the hearts of those that love the church. Uh, uh, that they have realized that uh, how they, uh, an individual, have devastated our community. Investigators are now convinced someone started this fire Friday night in an old piano that was standing in a pile of debris out in back of the church. It didn't take long for the whole building to catch, and it took two hours for the fire department to control what became a three-alarm blaze. There is no suspect yet, but at least investigators have a lot to work with. It's a real credit to the community, too, because a lot of people have come forward with information on this fire, so uh, investigators have been very pleased with the amount of information that they are getting. As one passing neighbor told us, this was more than just a building. 
it held a big part of this neighborhood's heart. And solving the crime will go a long way toward healing this fire's hurt. Rick Price, Como News 4. When it comes to solving arson, some of the best weapons are public tips. If you think you have any information on an illegally set fire, you can call the arson hotline. The toll-free number is 1-800-55-ARSON or 1-800-552-7766. Callers can remain anonymous. Family members of the four firefighters killed in the Pang Warehouse arson will soon receive money donated by the public. But they're not all happy with the settlement. The firefighters were killed in January when the basement of this burning warehouse collapsed. Since then, the public has donated $600,000 to help the firefighters' families. There's disagreement among the families of some of these men about how that money should be divided. One suggestion was made to give more to the married firefighters who left behind children. Some family members argued that Randy Turlicker's family shouldn't receive any of the donations because he wasn't married and didn't have any children. A retired state Supreme Court justice was asked to settle the dispute. He pretty much split the money evenly four ways. Investigators still don't know what caused a fire that sparked fear in Chelan over the weekend. The brush fire destroyed one home. No one was there at the time except the family dog. It got out okay. Investigators say many more homes could have burned because the fire zigzagged all over this neighborhood on the north shore of Lake Chelan. Bill Holtz is one of the lucky ones. His house is next to the one that burned. It could have been any house between where it started and then where it ended up. Last summer's devastating wildfires burned on the south side of Lake Chelan. A man who tried to set fire to the Monroe Police Station remains in critical condition tonight after a bomb blew up in his face. Police say the 28-year-old man was trying to light the firebomb when it exploded. Doctors at Harborview Medical Center say he's burned over 80% of his body. Monroe Police say they're still puzzled about the bombing and don't know why the man wanted to blow up the building. Authorities could be closer to finding the Unabomber, and the Los Angeles Times reports it could be a man with ties to the Northwest. The Times says James William Kilgore bears a striking resemblance to the notorious terrorist. The Unabomber is wanted for killing three people and injuring 23 others with 16 package bombs. He's been at large since 1978. The L.A. Times reports Kilgore disappeared in 1976 after a bomb-related charge. Kilgore was born in Portland, although he's now believed to be living in the San Francisco Bay Area. Kilgore also was linked with the Symbionese Liberation Army, the terrorist group which kidnapped Patty Hearst more than 20 years ago. Flights are back on schedule at Mark Air after a bomb scare grounded a flight from Seattle. A Mark Air flight was forced to return to Seattle just after takeoff last night. No bomb was found and the flight was resumed to Chicago and a dozen Mark Air flights were grounded in Denver. The FAA found a plane with dents in its fuselage and investigators found problems with the maintenance records of several planes. All flights were back in the air today. News for your health is next, including what could be a breakthrough in birth control for men. Then in about five minutes, Florida might be a major tourist state, but travelers are being ordered out right now. Steve Poole has the latest on wicked weather in Florida. And it's a far cry from your normal birthday bash. Just before the end of this newscast, see what's in the cake for these big cats. Sometimes the last thing you want from paint is an odor. So Benjamin Moore's created new Pristine. Pristine is virtually odorless. 100% acrylic, it's specially formulated for cleaner air. In colors that go on easy, stay on strong. Pristine, the new generation of paint, only at your Benjamin Moore dealer. And now get this free guide to color decorating with paint. Call 1-800-6-PAINT-6 for the dealer nearest you. You decorated my life. Friends, thank you. With your help, for the fourth straight year, Poulsbo RV is the world's number one Winnebago dealer. How do we do it? The best selection and low prices. Example, you can own a brand new Class C for just $2.99 a month. How about a brand new Class A for just $29,950? Or a fully loaded Vectra starting at $56,950. So if you're looking to buy a motorhome, now is the time. Come see us. Poulsbo RV will save you a ton of money. What is wireless? And what does AT&T have to do with it? For the sidekicks, it's finding alternative transportation to the big game. For Joan Pfeiffer, it's sending email from her laptop to an associate's messaging device hundreds of miles away. And to Dave Coates, it's dialing his cellular phone with just call home his voice. 
Introducing AT&T Wireless Services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. Yeah, it's, it's nice and, and quiet out here in the country. And, uh, I think you'll find the pace a little more laid back. My wife and I have always dreamed of having a home in the woods. She first made the loan process simple. Uh, for a person like me that doesn't really enjoy doing paperwork, it was just ideal. Right now, C-First has special low rates on your choice of home loans. Choices for the way you want to bank. Howdy, folks. Cliff here and I hop with my latest tune. I wake up in the morning empty feeling inside. I need me a hearty meal, so I take a short ride. I get a big two-egg breakfast, and it fills me to the top. And now I'm feeling great thanks to my local IHOP. Sorry, folks, but the song's over. What a great crowd. <laughs> IHOP Big Two Egg Breakfast, only $2.99 every day, anytime at your IHOP now. Now, Como News 4 continues. Can the male hormone testosterone also be used as a male contraceptive? Scientists at the University of Washington are working on a male birth control pill, and testosterone could be the key. Researchers have found that added doses of testosterone actually cause a reduction in the production of sperm. Of the 350 men who volunteered for the hormone injections, more than 99% of them experienced such a drop. Currently, female birth control pills have a 97% success rate of blocking pregnancies. A judge has set a deadline for the makers of breast implants and women who filed suit against them. A federal judge has ordered all those complaints to be settled by August 30th. Four billion dollars was set aside by the implant makers to pay claims. But last month, the 70,000 women who filed complaints asked for more than 24 billion dollars. The judge ordered both sides to renegotiate a settlement with the money available, or the entire process will have to start again. If you have a claim or you need information about the breast implants, you can call this number. It's 1-800-887-6828. There's some new information and a reminder for new parents and their babies. The Seattle King County Health Department is reminding us that the sleeping position of a baby is an important factor in sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Research shows that babies should sleep on their backs or sides to reduce the risk of SIDS. Use a firm mattress in the crib and remove pillows or soft objects that could trap the baby between the frame and mattress. And don't let babies sleep on adult furniture or adult beds. About 30 babies a year die from SIDS in King County. It's the leading cause of death in infants here. Doctors in England have done something remarkable for a little girl there. They have constructed an artificial eye from natural sea coral. Five-year-old Amanda Hopkins lost her left eye when a playmate hit her with a broken tile. Surgeons couldn't repair the eye, so they created an artificial one from coral. Now the little girl can move her artificial eye and the ceramic replacement looks more natural. Amanda says her friends hardly notice. The doctors have performed more than 150 coral eye implants in the last 15 months. It's really amazing what oh, they can great. do these days, isn't that's it? That's right. Mm. And this amazing weather we're having right now, and it comes in time for the Seafair Week. Just this in time. is the perfect week to do this, and it's so gorgeous out there. Just the crystal clear skies here in the Northwest. What a beautiful day. We should count our blessings because there's a lot of weird, wild weather causing trouble in other parts of the country. For example, Tropical Storm Aaron continues to march toward southeast Florida. Aaron's power can already be felt. The storm is expected to be upgraded to a hurricane later tonight or tomorrow. We'll track it for you. More than 45 wildfires hit western Colorado this weekend, continue to burn this afternoon. Dry lightning is what sparked these fires, and the crews have evacuated 10 families from the area. So far, no homes have burned at this point. In the Midwest and the East, the story is still the oppressive heat. Heat officials are urging people to do the usual thing, stay in the shade and drink plenty of fluids, but these kids in Philadelphia said, hey, we'll go, we'll go you one better. We'll get out there near the fire hydrant. That's how we're going to keep cool. We'll be back to tell you if we have to deal with anything that warm around here in just a couple minutes. Stay there. Property owners, looking for a better way to maintain the overgrown off-lawn areas on your property? Call toll-free for details on the amazing Troybuilt Sickle Bar Mower, including this free information package and how you can use a brand new sickle bar on your own property free till 1996. 
The Troy-built sickle bar mower charges through tough, wiry field grass, over rugged, overgrown hillsides, around ponds, along fence lines. Even standing saplings are no match for the Scissor Action Troy-built sickle bar mower. And with a big 42-inch cutting blade and breakthrough power steering, you'll make quick work of big off-lawn mowing jobs. Plus, right now, you can use a brand new sickle bar mower free till 1996 with no money down and no payments till next year. For all the exciting details, call for your free information package today. For details on our whole line of Troy Built Sickle Bar Mowers, including how to have a sickle bar mower delivered to your home with no money down and no payments till 1996, call toll free 1 800 453 8500. That's 1 800 453 8500. Call now. I'm Kent, and he's Vanna, uh, Alan. Here's your chance to be on Wheel of Fortune. Watch Wheel each night this week at 7 p.m. on Como TV 4 and take a good look at Vanna White. Then tune in to Star 101.5 the next morning for your cue to call and tell us what Vanna was wearing. Now in Sydney, will you? <laughs> no. This man's blood can save lives. My body produced its own antibody to fight the hepatitis. But he may not be allowed to donate. He's behind bars. To save lives, should justice be blind, watch Inside Edition. Watch tomorrow at 4.30 on Como TV 4. No one brings you Northwest weather like Steve Poole. Clear, accurate. It's a forecast you can plan on, and it's next. Congratulations, Mrs. Johnson. You won monthly magazine sweepstakes. Fifty million. We won fifty million dollars. I won fifty million dollars. Snap out of it, Mrs. Dollars. J. You're not winning millions, but you're a winner with Denny's two ninety nine lunch baskets every day. Golden fried shrimp, tender chicken pita, or a juicy burger for an out of our mind two ninety nine every day. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Alice Johnson. No. Lynn. Oh, sorry. Wrong house. This baby beluga is making a splash of good news at the Vancouver Aquarium. Caretakers in British Columbia are relieved to see the female calf feeding on her own now. The beluga was born two weeks ago, and staffers say she's doing well. Once the beluga builds enough strength, caretakers have the challenge of getting her in the tank with the other grown beluga whales. Well, that could prove what to be quite great. a challenge. A little Steve pull back. Nice weather around here. Just, oh, it's great. You know, mm. and again, the timing, we like to have this week pretty, important. pretty much in good shape. Lots going on. I know you have many seafarer activities I'm sure you'll be participating in. So let's see how things are shaping up. Outside right now, you know we are off to a great start on the week. 82 degrees with sunshine and northerly wind. Our barometer falling and humidity is low at 30 percent. 82 the high temperature then for today, it's not a record, but it's certainly warmer than normal. You see that 77 and 56 is the range we would expect. And the 80s, pretty common, even along the coast, where traditionally you get a little bit more in the way of cloudiness. But look at this, CQ 84, Wishka had 82. We've got 82 in Port Orchard. Elsewhere in the Puget Sound Basin, it looks to be a similar situation with temperatures in the 80s to near 90 degrees. Olympia has 90, Issaquah 86. And down in Morton, 81 degrees. Dolores Kinsman watching things in CQ. Thanks, Dolores. We appreciate it. Now, let's talk about many things going on here nationally. First of all, sunshine from the Appalachians out to the coastline and up into New England. That's the good stuff. Everything else, eh, problems. Hurricane warnings right now down in Florida. And it's all because of Tropical Storm Aaron, which is the first big storm to kind of begin to threaten the Florida coastline a little bit. Here's what it looks like. You can see this just spinning away here and it gets you kind of oriented. Here's Miami over here. So the storm is just over the Bahamas, a little bit to the east of it. Cuba's down here and then you go to Haiti and on across there. So here's the basics on this storm. The max winds about 70 miles per hour. It's 360 miles southeast of Miami, moving northwest, albeit slowly. We'll continue to watch it. Chances are it will become a hurricane over the next 24 hours or so. This is the remnants of Tropical Storm Dean. So lots of thunder showers around Dallas and on up through the mid-Mississippi River Valley. I guess the bottom line is this is a place to be. The west is marvelous all up and down the coastline. Very strong high pressure protecting us all. Jet stream kind of arcing to the north, swinging back down like that. Ooh, that's a, that's a summer-like pattern there, and it's just in the right timing to give us a pretty nice week. So we will see fair skies for sea fair. Here's what it looks like tonight. Mostly clear then around the area. There might be a few high clouds drifting by, but not very many. 
and we'll put the overnight low temperatures in a range that'll keep us right down there in the 40s or so to the uh, mid 50s. So 49 in Olympia, 57 Seattle, 55 in Everett. That's the basic story. Now tomorrow, we'll just look forward to having some sunshine throughout the day. It's going to be a nice one. High temperatures throughout western Washington will be in the 70s to near 80 degrees, so it looks fairly comfortable. There they come, 77 in Everett, 82 in Tacoma, Olympia, about the same story. If you're going east of the Cascades, lots of sunshine there too. And on through the week, it looks about the same, upper 80s to near 90 degrees, 91 in the Tri-Cities, 90 in Walla Walla. Mostly clear skies tonight then, then by tomorrow, Hey, we're mostly sunny to start off our Tuesday. We'll pretty much stay that way. Sunny with a few high clouds. Highs inland around 83 on the shores near 74 degrees. So to plan your day, sunglasses, definitely. When you head out the door, sunblock probably in the afternoon. In a word, we're talking balmy here, folks. Not too shabby. And the rest of the week, here it is. 81 for tomorrow. 82 for Wednesday. 82 for Thursday and near 80 degrees on Friday when we just get ready for our big seafair weekend and we've got the parade and, na -na, you know, lots going on. So, and the na-na, yeah, yeah. And the na-na <laughs> is great. You never want to miss the na-na during the seafair. Hey, that Sorry. one's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. Excellent. Thanks. Sure. A new summer program is bringing youngsters in from the heat, all in the name of science. It's the Seafirst Jammin' Science Fest. More than 100 kids gathered at the Del Ridge Recreational Center today through hands-on experiments, teachers are trying to show these kids science can be fun and exciting. The Science Fest is aimed at improving science literacy in our state and creating early interest in scientific fields. With the help of scientists, Como's Team 4 investigators are checking to see if we're at risk from a bug called Cryptosporidium. It's the same microorganism which sickened hundreds of thousands of people in Milwaukee two years ago. It was in their water supply. We wanted to know if it's in our drinking water, so we asked our Team 4 investigators to find out more about this little bug. Uh. They teamed up with a local expert to test the water here, and tonight at 11 o'clock, we'll have the results of those tests for you. It's a mega deal that was signed, sealed, and delivered in a matter of days. The $19 billion handshake that should have Como TV viewers very interested in about 25 minutes. Rescued pilot Scott O'Grady also has what could be a great entertainment deal in the works, as you'll see at about 542. But first, prosecutor Marsha Clark tips her cards and threatens to use some new evidence against O.J. Simpson. A live report is next. Whether you're a longtime Seattle native, new to the area, a visitor, or you know someone who is thinking of moving here, you need Step 1 to Seattle and vicinity. This 30-minute videotape and booklet is packed with information that allows you to compare different areas of Greater Seattle by home and apartment styles, school districts, commutes, recreational opportunities, crime data, and more. Step 1 to Seattle, available for only $19.95 at Tower Records and Video and Blockbuster Video, or call 1-800-659-1553. Even today, babies can get whooping cough, and it can lead to pneumonia or death. Measles is very contagious and can cause hearing loss. Hepatitis B can result in liver disease for the rest of your life. Hip disease may be fatal to babies or leave them with brain damage. By age two, all kids should be immunized against nine serious diseases. Please help your kids stay healthy. Call 1-800-322-2588 now. Watch Regis weekdays at 9. Now, Como News 4 continues. In half an hour, divers will postpone their search for a little girl who may have drowned. Kaylee Alberts would have been two this coming Friday. Her family fears she drowned in the Skykomish River this weekend. She wandered away from a family barbecue Saturday night. All day, crews searched for Kaylee by air, by boat. Divers looked in the water. Strong currents made a tough job tougher as family members looked on. Just over an hour ago, crews said they have searched every place they thought Kaylee's body might be but they have not found any sign of her. So they will meet in a half hour at 6 o'clock, and they'll decide what to do tomorrow. 
search also continues for answers in the case of a missing three-year-old girl from Tacoma. Lenoria Jones vanished last week. Her aunt reported her missing. Police say Berlene Williams' story has changed several times. At this point, detectives are checking out several possibilities for Lenoria's disappearance. They're looking into the possibility of a custody dispute, abduction, foul play, or possibly an accidental killing. Something of a bombshell in the O.J. Simpson case today. The chief prosecutor, Marsha Clark, suggested that she has the evidence to link the bloody gloves found at the murder scene with a pair of gloves Simpson wore during a football broadcast. Reporter Jerry Giordano is outside the courthouse in Los Angeles with more on today's developments. Jerry? Margo and Dan, just when you thought you heard the last about the infamous bloody gloves, they are back and today took center stage once again. Outside the presence of the jury, Marcia Clark told the judge she is armed with photos and videos of O.J. Simpson wearing gloves during football broadcasts that she can prove were the same gloves used in the murders. Clark threatened to use this evidence if the defense introduced shrinkage experiments on new gloves by a defense scientist. We didn't tell them to conduct the experiment in this manner. They have set themselves up for a fall by doing it in the way that they did. You pay your money, you take your chances. The defense said the material would be prejudicial to their client and decided not to use the experiments. This is a tactical decision that you're making on behalf of your client, so I just want the record to be clear. When the jury finally returned to the courtroom, blood spatter expert Herbert McDonald took the stand and again told the court that a blunt spot on one of the socks taken from Simpson's bedroom did not come from a spatter. Supporting the defense claim it was planted. And using one of Johnny Cochran's own socks, he showed jurors how blood appeared to soak through to the other side, something that would not have happened if someone were wearing the socks. And I interpret that as being part of the staining action here at the time this was wet and went through. But under cross-examination, Prosecutor Marsha Clark got the scientist to admit that before he examined the socks on April 2nd, he'd never seen them before. And you cannot tell this jury that those little balls came to be on the opposite inside surface on June the 14th, June the 15th, August 10th, September 28th, or any other date specifically before the date you examined them on April 2nd. Isn't that right? No, I have no idea when they occurred. They occurred prior to my examination. And we are back live now where earlier today a local TV reporter here in Los Angeles refused to reveal her source behind a story that aired last September that linked Nicole Brown's blood to the socks found in Simpson's bedroom. Defense attorneys want to know who that source is because that report aired before the tests were complete on those socks and they say that bolsters their theory that O.J. Simpson was framed. I'm Jerry Giordano reporting live in Los Angeles. Dan Margo, back to you. Jerry, months ago when they started picking the jury for this trial, people were saying, believe it or not, it could last till August. Well, now we're heading into August. When's this trial going to wrap up? Any idea at all? It's really hard to say. I never would have thought I would have been here a year, but uh, we're coming up on that right now. Johnny Cochran said August 7th he will be through with his case, but then there are the rebuttal cases here in California. They present rebuttal cases on both sides. So uh, an, a conservative estimate, perhaps uh, mid to late September, we're thinking. Jerry Giordano, thanks for the live update. Police are patrolling another Los Angeles neighborhood following a weekend of violence. The trouble began late Saturday when police officers shot and killed a 14-year-old boy. Police say he aimed a gun at them, but witnesses say he wasn't armed. Residents of Lincoln Heights upset over the shooting threw rocks and bottles at police. More than 20 people were arrested. The LAPD is promising a full explanation of the shooting. Part of our Como Crime Crackdown is to show you ways to fight crime in your neighborhood. And there's a good opportunity coming up tomorrow. It's called Night Out Against Crime. Como's Tracy Vetter joins us right now live from First Hill where they're getting ready for a night out celebration tomorrow night. Tracy, tell us what this is all about. Well, by this time tomorrow night, Dan and Margo, this entire block should be blocked off. There'll be no cars allowed in here because it's going to be a huge block party. And between this street and this small park, organizers expect something like four and 500, between four and 500 people here for first for night out celebrations. Now, the idea behind night out is quite simple. It's about getting together with your neighbors and talking about ways to keep your community safer. Nearly 200 people showed up for last year's night out party on First Hill, including a surprise visit from Seattle Police Chief Norm Stamper and Mayor Norm Rice. It was just one of 300 block parties in Seattle alone. In Magnolia, it was a time to warn neighbors about a car prowling problem. And Yvonne over there in the corner, she tells me that this 
young gang is running up and down our alley with a siphoning can, so be sure and lock your cars at night. Nationwide, nearly 8,500 communities will be taking part in Night Out this year. That's about 25 million people. Police hope this will be the first step in getting neighbors to work together. Really the idea of the Block Watch is the neighbors getting together, becoming acquainted with each other and communicating with each other. And then if problems start developing, they can work on them collectively instead of individually. With me now is Clay Nielsen, who's heading up tomorrow night's festivities here at First Hill Park. Clay, what have you got in line for tomorrow night? Everything. <laughs> we have the uh, Seafair Clowns coming. We have refreshments. We have draw door prizes, drawings. The mer merchants have contributed generously to these door prizes. All kinds of food and people getting together and having fun. So this is, this is a fun celebration. It's you not... bet it is. Okay, great. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us, Clay Nielsen. Two things to remember about Night Out. First, turn on your outside lights at 7 o'clock. That's a symbol that you're going to take a stand against crime. And secondly, get together with your neighbors and discuss ways that you can make your neighborhood safer. Dan and Margo? And see the people power in action tomorrow. Absolutely. That's what will be happening right here tomorrow night. Tracy, thanks. In Washington, D.C., Oregon Senator Bob Packwood has won a major victory. A Senate committee has decided not to hold public hearings on allegations against him. Those allegations include sexual misconduct and other abuses of power. While the Senate Ethics Committee will not convene a public hearing, it will go public with all the documents it's collected in the Packwood case. But at least one critic of Packwood is refusing to give up the fight for public hearings. California Senator Barbara Boxer says she'll propose a full Senate vote on the issue. Congress is down to its last witness in the Waco hearings, and for now it appears most lawmakers believe the Branch Davidians caused their own fiery end. After two weeks and 99 witnesses, the House committee is close to giving its opinion about who's to blame for the deadly outcome of the Waco raid. 81 people died at the compound. Today's testimony focused on why the FBI fired tear gas into the building and how the fire began that consumed the compound. The fires were not started by the FBI or anybody who was connected with law enforcement, but rather had to have been started inside that compound. Now, the only witness left is Attorney General Janet Reno. She's expected to testify tomorrow. This could be the hot issue for the 96th presidential campaign. It could mean big changes for millions of Americans. Both the Republicans and the Democrats want drastic changes in welfare. We got an idea of those changes today when President Clinton and Republican Senator and presidential candidate Bob Dole spoke to a meeting of the nation's governors. Dole wants to end federal welfare and give blocks of money to the states, let the state legislatures spend it as they wish. The president says that won't work. This program, after all, is called Aid to Families with Dependent Children, not Aid to States with Terrible Budget Problems Created by Congress. President Clinton wants to control welfare money by requiring welfare recipients to work for their benefits. Last week in our For Kids Sake report, we brought you the disturbing news about the rise in teenage runaways in this state. Tonight, Connie Thompson has a follow-up concerning the new runaway law, which just took effect. She's learned the new law really isn't in effect after all. So, Connie, what's Not happening? exactly. Unfortunately, it's a case of the slow wheels of progress, in this case, government progress. The law is on paper, but not in practice. The runaway bill signed into law last May calls for big changes in how runaways will be handled. It requires police to return runaways to their parents or a shelter. Runaways can be placed in crisis centers and held for up to five days for evaluation. And a judge can order involuntary drug and mental health treatment. But as Shelley Rollins is finding out, so far the new law is more theory than reality. She's trying to get her 14-year-old off the street. In initially contacting DSHS, they weren't even sure what laws went into effect when. Many state workers don't even understand the law yet. Police around the state know about this new law, but they don't know exactly what to do. Our department policy is being drafted. Police policies have to be changed to comply with the new law. Until then, it's essentially business as usual. At this point, we would just, we'd bring them back to the station, we'd contact the parents and have them respond, come to the station and, and help talk with the kids and try to figure out a, something to do with these children. But police are not to blame. It's the system. Well, supposedly with the Becca bill passing, there are to be treatment facilities available where they can do assessments. The new law calls for lockup shelters where runaways can be held for evaluation. 
Like you said, they don't have the secure shelters yet, and they're not anticipating getting any for a while. The state says it could take six months to a year or more before the runaway law can really do what it's intended. It's a real helpless situation. Um, you just... Um, we need more cooperation to get this program to work more effectively. I just talked to Shelley before airtime and she told me she located her son last week and even took him to juvenile court to find out more about the new runaway law. But while she was trying to get help, her son slipped past a guard and took off again. So he's back on the streets. The law technically is in effect, but it's going to take some time for the system to catch up with it. Obviously frustrating for parents like Shelley. So what can they do in the meantime? It's frustrating for police too. One thing they can do is call the police. Call your police and find out what their new policies are. And most important, call your legislator and tell them what you're running into because next year we are going to see another tougher version of the runaway law. Okay, thanks, okay. Connie. We haven't seen or heard the last of Captain Scott O'Grady. The rescued pilot's new project is still ahead. But first in sports, she doesn't get paid for what she does, but she's still the best of the best. I'm Steve Poole at about five minutes to the hour. We'll see if this sunshine can hang in there for the entire big seafair week. That's coming up. Stay with us. Coming up on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, the new giant in the world of entertainment. The Walt Disney Company is buying this company, Capital Cities ABC, for $19 billion. Tonight, what led to the deal and what it may mean for movies and television. Watch tonight at 7 o'clock here on Channel 4. You don't need a mainframe. No software is necessary. Neither are high-priced game cartridges or expensive satellite dishes. Yet it's the hottest interactive battle on television. And the answer is... Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Interactive TV in its purest form. Watch tonight at 7.30 on Channel 4. The Gallery Professional Series from Frigidaire. Polished stainless steel fashioned to create a culinary look that speaks to your soul and says, Yes, I am a chef. While it whispers to your budget, Oh, I'm also very smart. Frigidaire's Gallery Professional Series. Call 1-800-FRIGIDAIRE. It's the look of better performance in stainless steel. If you've ever wondered what a Nordic Track workout can do for you, just listen to an owner. People tell me all the time that uh, they don't think I'm 40, that I must be lying, and, and that makes me feel good, especially when I'm in a bathing suit, because everything's back where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I would say really try it because I was there too. I thought I'd never do it. It was going to be too hard. But the Nordic track really worked for me. I really think it can work for anybody. Pick up the phone and, and order a Nordic track. I'm living proof that it works. Don't listen to that little voice anymore inside your head that says, I can't do it, I can't do it. Because you can. You just tell yourself, I can, I can. And you can. And it really works. It, it has worked for me. And I know, I know it can work for you. Now's the time to achieve your fitness goals with Nordic Track. Call now for a free video and brochure or order before July 28th and save up to $150 on select Nordic Track models. Call now to get this special savings. Fighter pilot Scott O'Grady wants you to know more about his experience in Bosnia. O'Grady got a hero's welcome in Washington, D.C. last month after being rescued from behind enemy lines. Now he's writing a book. The Spokane native will get some writing help from a freelance journalist. O'Grady says he wants to let people know what happened when his F-16 was shot down and how he survived six days before a daring Marine rescue. Financial terms of the deal are being kept secret. The book is due out in November. Another flyer from our state says she's ready for a vacation. That's right. Astronaut Bonnie Dunbar says she's been away from home for far too long. Dunbar grew up near Yakima. She's been on three space shuttle missions, including the historic link-up last month between the shuttle Atlantis and the Russian space station Mir. Dunbar says she's tired right now of trips to outer space and needs some time to relax and to answer all of her mail. 
Yeah, you know those trips to outer space, they get a little blase <laughs> after a while, I guess. Tim Becker in for sports. Bruce King has the week off and uh, some changes maybe in baseball this well, week? possibly, but the clock is ticking on the acquisition meter, as they say. The Mariners have just a little over three hours left if they hope to make a trade to help the team in their playoff race. The trading deadline is set for 9 p.m. The Mariners say they are desperately seeking another starting pitcher. Meanwhile, the team is off today to get ready for the big showdown with the West leading Angels tomorrow in Anaheim. The M's are 11 games behind the front runners. Mike Blowers has himself a new watch today. What's so special about that, you ask? Well, he got it for being named the American League Player of the Week today. Uh, Blowers hit 500 for the week, along with three home runs and 11 RBI. He's the third M to win the award this year. Tino and Edgar Martinez are the other two. Well, baseball continues to struggle to win the fans back, and Chili Davis didn't help either yesterday. The Angels slugger got mad at a Brewers fan in Milwaukee, reached over the railing, and smacked him one. Well, the fan there was taken to a new seat. Chili was charged with disorderly conduct by the Sheriff's Department and fined, get this, $287. Look for a little steeper fine to be handed down by the American League. And remember John Crock, that guy who had this great at bat with Randy Johnson in the 1993 All-Star game? Well, yesterday Crock got a base hit in the third inning against the Orioles, and they decided that that would be his last hit right there. He took himself right out of the game, cleaned out his locker in the third inning, and announced his retirement, uh, saying the game just wasn't fun for him anymore. Well, if you're a fan of those thundering speed demons of the waterways, then this is your week. The Hydro Races are here. The Unlimited Hydro Series wrapped up their week of racing on the Columbia River in Tri-Cities yesterday. Mark Tate was the, uh, was the big winner, rather, in the Smoking Joes. Now they all make their way here to Seattle for Seafair and the Texaco Cup, qualifying is scheduled for Friday and Saturday. The big races are on Sunday, and as always, we'll have all the pre-race news all week long here on Como News 4. Well, next week, Bellevue's Beth Campbell will be honored in Florida as the National Volunteer Youth Coach of the Year. Now, Beth was chosen for more than 140,000 volunteer coaches across the country. All right, here we go, Slugger. Hit the ball. Um, she's, a, she's a good coach. Beth Campbell is a different kind of coach. Two years ago, she developed Buddy Ball as a way for kids with special needs to play baseball in an atmosphere where competition takes a back seat. All kids need to succeed. All kids need to be rewarded and, and praised for giving their best and trying their best, not winning, because not everybody's going to win. Go, Under Beth's system, everybody takes the field, everybody gets to hit, and everybody smiles because of it. She can take the kids who can barely bat up to the kids who can really bat, and she treats them all really well. But patience has got to be one of the key things. You know, just, you know, just the glow she has about her, you know, and the smile she has. It's a number of things. And we have an opportunity in sports and as coaches to build kids up, to build their self-esteem. And that means all kids, not just the kids at the top, the kids with the most ability. We help them with what they can't do and let them do what they can. And, of course, our congratulations go out oh, to yeah. Beth for her great work. What a work. great story. Yeah, that's nice. Thanks, Tim. ABC is being welcomed to the wonderful world of Disney. Coming up next, see what the powerful pack means for those two companies and to you, the viewer. Maybe my young son was. I have very little news. This new Best Foods low-fat mayonnaise dressing has very little fat. Only one gram. But there's big news about taste. You won't believe that one gram of fat can taste so enormously rich, so colossally creamy, so hugely delicious. New Best Foods Low Fat. Very little fat, very, whoa, big taste. Bring out the best foods and bring out the best. Hi, welcome to Godfather's Pizza. We, we like, like a combo. pepperoni. <laughs> combo. Pepperoni. Hey, order up my delectable half and half. You get half of my famous six topping combo and half pepperoni. Lip lock on a medium for just $9.99 or get a larger one of my jumbos. They're hot with a price to match. Size? Large. Meet Godfather's Pizza's half and half. Get a medium half combo half pepperoni just $9.99 or make it a larger jumbo. It's your choice. Only at Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Retirement living's wonderful at Laurel Oaks. Cares and worries are left at the gate, as I always say. Beautiful, spacious, manufactured homes start at only 79000 And rival houses costing a quarter million dollars. 
safe, secure, affordable, and a beautiful place to live. Take I-5 to exit 111 north of Lacey. Go east on Marvin Road. Start enjoying retirement. Join us at Laurel Oaks. How much do you pay for a minute of long distance overseas? I'd say about $1.65 a minute to Australia. $2 a minute? I don't like to look at the phone bill because it's usually so much. Introducing Sprint Sense International. Simply great rates to anywhere in the U.S. and now to anywhere in the world. 65 cents a minute to Korea? 65 cents for Australia? No gimmicks, no nothing. That's a great deal. I couldn't have said it better myself. Call now for Sprint Sense International and get up to 100 minutes free. This is a reminder that staining your house can be a real pain. So do it as little as possible, like every 10 years, with Eagle Hardware and Garden and Bear Stains. Bear Stains offer a unique oil and latex blend for 10-year durability, and Eagle offers 250 Bear products, plus Eagle experts to guide you through every phase of the job, from prepping to the finishing touches. So you'll stain once in 10 years, because once is enough. Eagle Hardware and Garden, more of everything. If you see breaking news and you have a cellular phone, you have a direct line to Como News 4. When you see news happening, call the Como News 4 breaking news tip line at pound 4444. The call is free from U.S. West Cellular and AT&T Wireless. It's the largest media merger in history. It involves the television network that we are affiliated with, ABC. Cap City's ABC is merging with the Disney Company. The $19 billion deal to create new partners comes as a big surprise to most people. Disney CEO Michael Eisner and ABC chairman Thomas Murphy broke the news on Good Morning America today, a stunning deal that happened in a most casual fashion. I literally passed Tom Murphy in Sun Valley on a street having talked to him twice before seriously over the past three years and said, Tom, you think the time is right now? Uh, Murphy said yes. You have all this wonderful programming and family programming that uh, Disney's created over all these years and will continue to create, and it'll be on our distribution system. Investors sure seem to like the idea. The value of both companies' stock went up today. Cap Cities ended up more than $20 a share. I cleaned it out, now it's Tim Taylor's party too. <laughs> Disney already produces two of the most popular shows on ABC, Home Improvement and Ellen. Disney will pay $19 billion to take over Capital Cities ABC. New York-based Cap Cities will become a wholly owned subsidiary of the California-based Disney Company. The combined enterprise will be known as the Walt Disney Company and will be headed by Eisner. We think that uh, these two companies are the premier family entertainment communication companies in this country. One ABC worker described today's deal as the combination of two world-class companies that will result in a universe-class operation. So what might this mean to the programs you see right here on Channel 4? First of all, we are not owned by ABC Cap Cities. Como is locally owned, and as an ABC affiliate, we get some of our programming, quite a bit of it, from the network. So if the deal is officially approved, as expected in January, Nothing really changes for you, except we hope the programming gets better. You'll still see all your favorite Como and ABC programs right here on Channel 4. And yeah, the amount of that deal, you heard it right, $19 billion. Yeah, that's a lot of money. In dollar value, this will become the second largest merger in U.S. history. Prior to the Disney-ABC deal, the largest was in 1990 when Warner Communications merged with Time. That deal was worth more than $14 billion. Earlier this year, the drug company Welcome PLC was acquired by Glaxo in a $15 billion deal. Disney and ABC will become number two at $19 billion. The largest deal Deal remains RJR Nabisco when it merged with Kohlberg Kravis Robertson Company in 1989. That deal was worth $25 billion. Well, the Disney movie Pocahontas is enchanting children from coast to coast. Today, some little fans got to meet the voice behind the animated character. It means always I have loved you, always I have thought of you. Irene Bedard gives the animated Indian princess a lovely voice. She also looks a little bit like Pocahontas. At a Florida mall, Bedard told kids a fairy tale, then signed autographs for wide-eyed fans. You know, all this talk about Disney. Steve Poole has a forecast coming up that truly is a Mickey Mouse forecast. <laughs> Plus, these junior jaguars come out to play at Woodland Park Zoo. 
Sam here is giving me enough good reasons to use my Dirt Devil hand vac, that now he's giving me five more. When they turn the house upside down, I turn on my Dirt Devil. It's powerful revolving brush, tears into dirt, chews up crumbs, and picks up pet hair. It has an extra long cord, and it's lightweight. So, I'd say my Dirt Devil is the pick of the litter. Right, Sam? <laughs> Right. Get a dirt devil and put the power of an upright in the palm of your hand. It has the same fluid lines of those higher price models, the same commitment to power and performance. And we're proud to announce this model not only passed that famous ball bearing test, it surpassed it. Of course, it's my dirt devil MVP with maximum vacuum power. Just think what it can do in your home. The MVP. Real proof that nothing escapes the power of a dirt devil. Nothing. The tape at the end, pull the radar box up, bolt the doors up, bolt the doors in. Take jungle later, wrap her up. So your pet can use it for the next two weeks. Hold the old box down, tape the old box close. Throw the old box out, throw a new box in. You do the jungle litter so there's no mess around. That's what it's all about. Jungle litter, the only disposable litter and box. Ask for it at your local grocers. Tap water. Good, clean, safe, right? That's what they thought in Milwaukee, and people got sick. Some even died. Seattle, Tacoma, East Side. Has anyone looked at your water? Como News 4 did, and we'll tell you if you need to worry or not. Monday at 11. And not just your water, but ice, too. You put it in lots of things you drink. How good is that? Find out when we test the water. Monday night at 11, only on Como News 4. Boys and girls jeans are now just $9.99 at Ross. Save 50 to 60% on the top brands for back to school. Don't you just love it? They're singing happy birthday tonight at Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo. Two jaguar cubs born at the zoo turned one year old today. The pair of cubs are the offspring of Jesse, an eight-year-old who's been at the zoo since 1988. The cubs share their exhibit with mom and will probably spend another year there before getting a place of their own. And for their birthday today, the youngsters were rewarded with one of their favorites. It's a birthday cake made from frozen chickens. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Yeah. Well, if you like today, you just might like the rest of the week. Here. I tell you what, it's looking really nice. We'll give you some specifics on it. I know some of you are wondering, what's this Disney thing going to mean for Como News 4? Well, there, you know, nothing major. Maybe a few subtle changes here and there. Anyway, our high for uh, Tuesday, 81, Wednesday, 82, Thursday, about the same, and Friday's high will stay at around 80 degrees. So for the Seafair week ahead, this, this looks to be looks to be fairly good. And, and again, I, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a wait and see attitude with regard to the whole. <laughs> I think Peter thing. Jennings will probably be He'll wearing probably one of those in uh, three or four minutes here. Actually, actually what I'm waiting to see is if we get any free Disney tickets, you know, to Disney. <laughs> that's, what, that's my wait and see right there. there. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Thousands of gallons of raw sewage are spilling into a local waterway coming up on Como News 4 at 6.30. A live report from the scene where the water looks safe but could make you sick. The city of Seattle is one step closer to owning this skyscraper. At 6.30, what's next in the negotiations? And is it a bomb yeah. or a blockbuster? Find out how Kevin Costner's Waterworld is doing at the box office. That's it for us. We'll be back at 6.30. Hope to see you then. World News Tonight is coming up next. Thanks for joining us. We do hope to see you a little bit later. <laughs>